United Liverpool, um, we took I took a full team on the pitch and we recreated a goal that was scored at Anfield a year before. <laughs> and we recreated that and United won 4-0 that day, but we we know it was 5-0. I scored the first, you know, so it was 5-0 that day. I got my mate on the end of the team lineup, the Man United team lineup. And it just exploded, man. It just went crazy. The next morning, <laughs> our mate knocked on the door. He said, you better get downstairs, man. There's millions of them journalists all looking for you. <laughs> <laughs> so when we went to Wimbledon, the plan was to get them two on the on centre court just before the final. So I just walked behind the security guard, just tapped him on the shoulder, excuse me, mate. And I could just see them two behind him, get up, jump over the fence on the pitch. <laughs> Live on telly, them two playing. <laughs> and I was just thinking, oh, wow, can we get on there really? Because look, right after 9 11, you know, and we were talking, we were talking to um, one of the guys that worked there the day before in the hotel, and he was saying they spent five million quid on security for that Grand Prix. And we just walked through it and then done a river dance. <laughs> All the crowd thought we was the drivers. <laughs> <laughs> I've done a load of little, little jails, me. I've always kept it, you know, white collar, very, very low, you know what I mean? Not, nothing serious. Mm. Just, I've done it on purpose, obviously, you know, so if you do get in trouble, you're not getting, it's, it's little sentences, three months, six months, 12 months. You know, you're not running into the years like yeah. someone else. <laughs> <laughs> I got the, the, the currency book sent over from America and I used to study that. Right, that'll go with that, that'll go with that, that'll go with that. I thought, right, I can put my own page in the book. So book, I got a load of books from America sent, ripped a page out and put my own page in and delivered them to the banks myself, like as a postman, just li like delivering them oh and then God. go back in. And then they'd open my book at my oh, page, that's... look at it, and then just give me the money. That's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, so that's what that's what happened in Denmark. We went in the first bank, got the first bank, and then the second bank swooped on us. And that was it, you know, 12 months in jail. I went to pick tickets up for the World Cup final, the Rugby World Cup final. I said a celebrity was coming, and I'm... My mates, this guy's gonna come and pick the tickets up, and he said, Okay. Next minute, boom, a load of police come, handcuff me to the chair. Everything changed instantly, like that bang. Today, on our true crime channel, we have an original, the original prankster. And many of you, Perhaps not the very younger ones have probably seen Tommy done stuff over the years. For example, there's the infamous snooker game. Where it's very, the atmosphere is very <laughs> serious. <laughs> They're trying to concentrate on their shots. And you hear... <laughs> <laughs> and you see a few heads turn and then they get back to playing and then all of a sudden it happens again. <laughs> and then the, it's quite serious scowls going on. That is just one of a lifetime of these pranks. So, Tommy has kindly come over here from Manchester. Oddly enough, we were raving at the same clubs on the same nights. Thunderdome, Oldham Road, Conspiracy, back when the Manchester uh, rave scene originally began. And he's, he's still going Glastonbury to this day, so... Salute you for that. <laughs> Gotta ask, do you pay to go to Glastonbury? No. No, me neither. <laughs> Are you going? Uh, not this year, no. no. Work, work. All right. Unfortunately. Can't you do, can do this at Glastonbury? Set up we in could, a field? We, we could probably yeah. coordinate some kind of. Um, Media interview thing. Are you gonna are you gonna take us in? <laughs> and I'll and I'll bring people to you. Because we're not far <laughs> from that either, are we? So, so uh, it's, it's Pilton, which is Shepton Mallet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, it's a great well, place. Yeah. Beautiful. Be, be, before we get to your life story, then looking back on it all, which prank are you the most proud of? Um, it's got to be when we a full team of us went on the pitch at Old Trafford. Um, United Liverpool, um, 
we took, I took a full team on the pitch and we recreated a goal that was scored at Anfield a year before. <laughs> and we recreated that and the crowd thought we was the team. It was, and then I scored the goal and then we ran over to the away end and started kissing our badges and stuff. And, <laughs> and then we all got three year bans for it, but that's, well, we won, United won 4-0 that day, but we, we know it was 5-0, I scored the first, you know, so it was 5-0 that day. So that's me. That's one of the one I'm proud of the most because I'm a United fan. So me too. I'm taking a full team on there. You know, I was always United from my childhood. Did you see that prank? I've not seen it because I was in America for almost twenty years. So I missed out on a lot of yeah. stuff. He didn't get. It didn't get the publicity it deserved. Really, no. It was, it was a major prank. We we we, we practiced it. We we rehearsed it for about three months. You that know? was my next question. What kind of preparation goes into these? <laughs> Because we well, just that, see a few seconds on minutes of madness. Yeah. Well, I just, I just thought, can I get a full team on the pitch? You know, can I? Can I? <laughs> and, and that was the challenge. You know, yeah. And then I asked a couple of lads if fancy it, and they all said yeah. And then we we all met. You know, we met a few times and practiced on this pitch in in Newton Heath in, in Manchester there, and went to the game that day and pulled it off. <laughs> It was brilliant, man. I mean, the, the preparation. I've got the, the, there's plenty of footage of it. Yeah, yeah, there's plenty of footage of I'm it. Trying to add some in then. Yeah, Definitely. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. So you were a good fan of uh, Eric Cantona. Absolutely, the yes. king, <laughs> King Eric. Yeah, he was brilliant. You know, because we, you know, we we go to the games. You know, I go with my kids now, but you know, I've been to the games all my life. So and impersonated a lot of his shirts. Oh, absolutely. Well, my mate got his shirt at Wimbledon. When, when when United won the league for the first time, we made that drag the shirt off him, <laughs> <laughs> which was pretty funny. But uh, yeah, so growing up in Manchester, mm -hmm. yeah. So all your family is straight. You're the only prankster of the family. Yeah. So when was your first prank? My first prank. There's always been little things that have been happening, uh, and I just had the the gall and the, the feel to just. Not, not pay, you know, not just walk in and just, and it just continued from there, you know. So it's, it's just been a lifeline, a, a lifelong thing, you know. Did you do that at Spike Island? Yeah. <laughs> I was there, that was, was there. Yeah, yeah. We've been to a lot of places at the same time. <laughs> What's Spike Island? You don't know, oh, oh see, right. young, <laughs> younger generation here. Stone Roses. Okay, yeah, they stay Witnesses' matches. claim to fame was yeah. in terms of music and concerts and stuff. Yeah. You can't laugh at my music now, can you? Because <laughs> he's going to say music. Yeah. music. <laughs> well, yeah. Big uh, festival on, on the River Mersey. Right. Yeah. It's still not ongoing then. But it was like, it was considered iconic for the time, especially for Witness. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So. Stone Roses. So yeah. was it little things like going into a shop as a kid, stealing sweets and yeah. hustling? That's it, that's it. And then go to football, go to, you know, go to football early and, you know, nicking programmes and, you know, selling them and then nicking tickets and selling them, you know, and just, just you know, the, the game was, it was money time sort of thing. We, we, you know, we, we all became grafters out of it. Yeah, didn't your brother chuck you over the wall? When I first went, yeah, he did. Shut me over the turnstile. <laughs> first game, and that was in 1970. It was only eight. <laughs> <laughs> so I've not been, and I still go now, so it's a lifelong thing. Do you still get chucked over the wall? I don't get chucked over the wall now. <laughs> but I chuck my kids over. Do you? <laughs> no, I don't, no. <laughs> no felonies. <laughs> so were you serious in school or were you the class clown? <clears throat> was I serious in school? I want to say, I didn't really go to school much. Okay. I didn't really go to school, you know. We, didn't appeal. None of us did, you know. We just, we just, well, a bus, we usually get a bus round, round our way to school, and then by the time the bus got to school, we all get ducked down, you know what I mean? The school, <laughs> the bus would drive past school. So we didn't, we didn't really go to school. So. Where did you hang out on school days? In Greenfields. Have you heard of Greenfields? No. It's in the moors, in, in the hills there. The moors. We used to go there a lot. And your parents never knew that you were skiving? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they, they might have done. I don't know. Well, no, I don't think they did. I don't, I don't think she knew me, Mum. I don't think she knew that. But we did anyway. We didn't. Yeah. So I didn't really go to school. I don't think... It's not done me no harm, not going. I don't think they had parent-teacher nights back then. Well, in this day and age, they actually have registers that recognise yeah. and obviously yeah. 
Because the pen wanted them days, yeah. taking it in. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So no. Did you get in trouble at school? Yeah, I got in trouble at school. What was that for? Naughty things, you know, just doing things on teachers and stuff, you know. I got caned. Throwing for, things. At, I got caned for snowballing the board and teachers. Stuff. Yeah. You yeah. saw you got what? Caned for snowballing teachers. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know you were that old. Did you used to get the bacon slice? We used to get the bacon slice. Have you heard of that one? No. With no. a ruler. On your on your ass, you'd get a ruler. <laughs> he'd say to you, thick or thin, you know what I mean? <laughs> so if you said thick, he'd just whack it. But if you said thin, it, it both hurt. Who was the hardest caner at your school? The headmaster, I think. Headmaster. <laughs> he was horrible, wasn't he? Yeah, he was bend over. Oh, he, might, he, might, he might have been getting a kick out of it for all we know, you know what I mean? Yeah, we had one that jumped <laughs> off the table. What? Yeah. He would jump off the table, Spud Murphy. He'd be like, I'm yeah. the hardest gainer in this school. Yeah. And he'd jump off the table and boom. Yeah. <laughs> but he wasn't. Mr. Prendergast was the hardest. You didn't yeah. tell him that, though? No. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the haircut trick? Oh, the haircut trick. Um, I, I I used to go to barbers in the, in, the, in in town in Lewis's and just sit down and get you know yeah what do you want shot back and sides and then do the do the thing and I just, I just go oh you're not gonna believe it mate lost me one <laughs> get out you little bastard you know what I mean <laughs> can't put you know just that was it you know and then just, oh right sweet I've got to pay for an haircut now and then do it again not the same place but another haircut another barbers <laughs> not paying for haircuts. <laughs> Today's a, but looking back, it's just funny, man. It's just, you know, it's that's how it was. Didn't pay for anything, really. Just fun and games. Didn't pay for anything. <laughs> Did you ever do that on a date, though? Turn up to a first date and do the um, wallet trick? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's always it's happened a lot, you know. Oh, you're not going to believe it, mate. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> not going to lie, someone's done yeah, that to me. <laughs> have you ever done that no what me and wild man used to do when we were kids was the bandit trick so we go from pub to pub with the fruit machine the slot machine we were like yeah yeah we all act all excited like we just had a payout and then we'd be like the money it's not, it's not come out yeah and then we go to the bar and say look there's no money come out and they'd take our, they'd like write something down and give us two or three quid they'd write something down give us two or three quid and we'd get away and then we'd go to the next pub and do yeah. it and how much would you make an evening so we we made like 20, 30 quid. That was a lot for us as kids. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Did yeah. you do that one? Not that one, no, but we 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 always had little moves going at the bars and stuff. What moves did you have at the bars? Um like giving them twenty and then hiding ten off and saying, you know, you're not giving me the ten pound. Yeah. yeah. Or swap it for a five off, you know, yeah. a quick bang. And yeah. oh sorry, I did take the five off and give another ten. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> and just say, you know, four pints and then you know, a crowded bar and then I can have another two pints and just get off, you yeah. know. So during your school years, were you ever in trouble with the law? Yeah. Yeah, all the way through. Oh, oh really? What for? Yeah, just like little thefts and stuff and, yeah, thefts. And I got in trouble really young, really, um, 10 or something, and then just went from there, really. What was it like, your first arrest in the back of the cop car? Um, my first nicking, wow. Um, it's got to be shoplifting. Mm. It's got to be. <laughs> Young kid just shoplifting. Um, Did they tell your parents? Yeah, when your parents have got to come for you and stuff. Mm. You know what I mean? How and, are you feeling as they yeah, were coming? <laughs> oh, not good. <laughs> <laughs> not good, man. It's, and then it was... Were you more scary, mum or your dad? Well, my mum was sweet, man. She won she, 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 my dad, my dad, won, he wasn't really strict either. But, but then he, he left, he, he went away then, my dad, and my mum on her own. Mm. So she was fine, my mum. She was great, you know what I mean? Because I used to give her, I used to give her money, you know? So she was, she understood. Yeah, you know what I mean? So I, I helped, I helped put food on the table. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so it was from a young age, so it was great. Did you have a lot of brothers and sisters? Yeah. Well, I had one sister and two brothers. They've passed away now then. Mm, my mum and dad have gone as well. Mm. So I'm the last one standing. Yeah. They've got their ki- I've got all their kids, you know, all their kids in there, baby. But yeah. Yeah. So good family, you know, we, we had a good upbringing, really. So what did you aspire to be when you were leaving school? Um, wow. Apart from running on the Manchester United <laughs> pitch. Um, I didn't really have a, I don't know. I didn't really, I didn't really think about that. I just, we was doing all that as we was, so I was I was happy what I was doing mm. until things got messy. 
But then it was, you know, I was earning pretty good money at them days, so I was, I was all right. I didn't really, looking back now, I should have, you know, because I, like, I went in that film, I was in a film called Inbound Birmingham. The doll sent me, you know, and I, I, I really then, that would have been my time then to like, should I take this series there? And I didn't, I just done it and left. But that was a pretty big film with, you know, pretty big actors in it and that, so. My son's an actor. Is the he? youngest lad, yeah. What, the one you he uh, assisted on a few pranks, Junior? No, 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 that's my oldest son, my youngest lad. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, Junior's done a few pranks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that. <laughs> Junior's done a, done a right few pranks. <laughs> what was the first music you're into? Like, what first single you, you bought? Do you remember? It must have been the Beatles. Beatles? It's got to have been, it's got to have been the Beatles. I've pick up the Beatles mug. Mine was yeah. Holidays in the Sun. Yeah. I don't know what record, but it's one of the albums, mm. is it the red one or something? One of the, you had a red, did he have a red one and a blue one, didn't they? One of them it was, yeah. So the Beatles, because me, my sister's fella, he loved them. Yeah, my parents were totally into them. Yeah. Yeah, they were, mum was at the cavern and everything. Yeah, that, all right, yeah. Yeah. Did you do the cavern yourself? I've been to the... The, the new one. The new one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We'll, what, we'll take you around there later. Really? <laughs> yeah, on the dock for sure, yeah, yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what was day-to-day -day life like, like that then? Were you just hustling? Football. football. Playing playing football and going football. And then, you know, going out of town, um, grafting, you know? You know, for money. You know, get, going out of town for money and stuff. Can you talk about what sort of things you were doing? Yeah, just um, like going in supermarkets and stuff and, you know, robbing saves and stuff, sneaking in the back room and... That's one of the questions. Getting, what getting our hands in saves and stuff. And then, so that's what we've done. And played football and went to watch United. That was a life. How on earth do you crack at a safe? No, it's got to be open. <laughs> or the, oh, key, or the key's on the side. Oh, <laughs> so you can't, you, no, no, you can't crack it open. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Like Michelin Impossible. No, no it's, they're either, it's, it's open or the key's on the side or something. And was that quite easy? Well, the key's there, yeah. It's, you know, it's gone. Just yeah. sneaking in. Sneak, yeah. sneak yeah. thief. Yeah, yeah. We have a nearly caught. Yeah, loads. Yeah, I went, you know, jail. Come out, jail, you know, like that. How old were you when you went your first jail? 15. 15, so that's young offenders then. Yeah, I went to detention. That's when I seen Fraser. Right. In strange ways. Was it? I was only fifteen. Yeah. Mad Frankie Fraser. Mm. Mm. What? What was your? What was he like in there? He just said, "How long are you there?" And I said, "I said I'm, I'm just passing through." I said, "I'm on doing three months." And he went, "Oh, you know, get out and don't, you know, don't come back." Wise advice, but it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so what, when was the next one? And then the following year. Um, I got nicked again in Rochdale with my mate and we got Barstow this time and got sent to Barstow for a year in in Inley Barstow. Have you heard of Inley Barstow? I've watched that movie Scum. Yeah. It was, well, it, it was before that. What, what, what year was that out, Scum? It was around about the same time, wasn't it? I've actually spoke at Hindley. I'm oh, sorry. Near Wigan. Yeah. Yeah, I spoke. That's Young Offenders. Yeah, about, like about that 10 thing. years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it, it, it was it's, called, it was Inley Barstow, that. It's the same yeah. place. Yeah, so we're in there, and then we started going abroad. Then, you know, started going to, to Europe, and then ever since then, just been yeah, you know, got Germany, Holland, and Belgium, Switzerland, and then further afield. Yeah, just good life, really. Doing similar things. Yeah, safe. Just doing pranks. Well, not doing pranks. Just doing Hustles. making money. Yeah. Yeah. Was it easier in some countries? Were they less lax of oh, yeah, security? Absolutely. Yeah. Which was easier? When it first, when it first, Holland, Holland, when it first opened, it was crazy. Ah. Crazy easy, you know? Because there was no, well, there must have been crime there, but we didn't know. We didn't, I don't think there's anything happening there. There's nothing, you're just like, wow, this is, this is too easy. So, and then we used to go to the, um, on the tours with United. Wherever United was playing, you know, bomb go with it, pre season tours. Brilliant. Were you sneaking on tour buses? Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, got in a Barcelona. The, 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 which one are you referring to? The city, the, the Barcelona uh, boss. Well, you've been on quite a few, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> a few. Yeah, the Barcelona boss. When um, well, I said to the guy, the, the driver, I said, um, you know, what time are we going today? And he's like, you know, oh, we're leaving about six o'clock. So he thought I was with them, and they thought I was with him. So <laughs> bomb. So I just got on the bus and sat down, and then the, 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 the team got on. And I'm on the bus there with like Messi and that, and it's like, <laughs> wow, what's going on here, man? How does the socialisation begin with him then? Well, I didn't speak to him. I just did. I just filmed it because I had a, I had a camera on, I had a button camera, so I filmed it all. So, but he's, he was like, when people seen it, it was like, wow, what the hell? You know, I could have been anybody. Then in the end, the manager said to me like, who are you? I said I'm with him. Pointed at the driver, and the driver goes. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Get off. You know what I mean? <laughs> Kicked off. Kicked off. Oh, no. But I've got the footage. Well, there you go. That's what you need. That's it. <laughs> so at what point in your life did you have two driving licences and two passports? Oh, right. Well, well, the that story is I went to Jackson's Row with, me, with my birth certificate to get a passport to go abroad. And I've handed the... I've handed it into the lady and she's looked at it and she said, um, I can't find it. I can't find your name. So I said, well, that's my name. So she's couldn't find it. And I saw for me, man, what's going on here? She went, oh, try this other name. So I tried this other name and it was right. So I was like, so I've been calling myself this all my life and really I'm that. <laughs> And she's like, no, no, I just didn't want to, you know, she, she just said, I didn't want to, I wanted your daughter to be, have the same name, you know, different father, but I wanted your daughter to have the same name. So I said, yeah, you could have told me, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I had two, I had two names then. So that's, so then they had two passports, then they had two driving licences. So oh. if I got banned on one, I'd use the other, you know, so it, 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 it was a good that thing in the end. Me. Did it? So I was born under a BT and then my mum changed it via big deep hole to Lucas. So for years throughout school, I was known as Lucas. Yeah. And when I was 16, my national insurance turned up BT, so I had a bank account in Lucas and was able to open one in BT. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, 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 yeah. Honestly, neither it, of them now. It comes in under, doesn't it? But yeah, similar, similar. But so you used uh, both? I used both for years. <laughs> I did. I used both for years. Yeah. And then when my mum passed away, and then I, I, I changed it by deed poll proper then. Yeah. So... But it was, it was, it was like, wow. I couldn't get my head around it, you know. For the, I was only young, you know. What I mean, I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. But it's funny now when I look back. So it's, it's not, no harm done. So if you're getting point, points on your license, you could get effectively. Just get, use the other one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's Very it. clever. Just, yeah, use the other one. So your teenage years, you've come out of ball stool. Yeah. And then, just full blast going abroad. Then you know, the full time thing. Then. You know, we, we, we was abroad a lot, like every week. We'd go away for the week, come back for the week, go again. Just kept going, you know, and just getting, I'm just getting better at things. And then the, the rewards came and then just living good, really. Mm. We, had a, we had a laugh, you know, we, 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 had, we, had, we had fun, it was great. And how do you know Carl, Carl at this point? I was an old fat neck. Um, fat neck. <laughs> Carl, I've known him all my life. He's younger than me. I used to, I, I'm, I'm in the same age as his brother, there, Stephen. Yeah. So I was mates with Stephen before Carl. And then Carl just started hanging about with us and stuff. So I've known him for years, since he was a kid, since he was a baby. So when you're in the Borstals then, are you intimidated or do you know people? Was it an easy lot, ride? I knew, a lot, I knew a lot of people there. Yeah. I knew a lot of people in there, so it it was great. It, it wasn't it wasn't it was great. I, I enjoyed it. it. Was on the football team. We won the league. <laughs> played all our games at home. You know, obviously. <laughs> what what was the guards like? Um, it was, I thought it was all right, man. I didn't I didn't get on any any abuse or anything. You know what I mean? It was it was a pretty rough place, but it was because there were two houses Liverpool, two houses Manchester. So you only met each other in work, you know what I mean? So 
he was, he was, I liked it, mate. He was all right. Did it kick off between Liverpool and Manchester? When there was a game, when there was a United-Liverpool match or something, there might be little, little things happening, you know what I mean? But, yeah. Yeah. So, but he was, I liked it, you know, football team. And, yeah, I liked it. What about the minutes. hooliganism of that era? Yeah. Was, yeah. I wasn't really new to myself. I was... Um, I was more into the getting dough, getting money. Yeah. I'd rather, you know, if they're all scrapping over there, I'd be over there, you know what I mean? They're not getting paid to scrap, that's, are they? That's, that's like, it, you know what yeah. I mean? So I knew a lot of Hoolies, but I wasn't I wasn't really one of them. I'd rather, rather be over there working. Yeah. Go to jail for something, you know. <laughs> so how long were you out of jail for, for your next incident? Um, I've done a load of little, little jails, me. I've always kept it. You know, white collar, very, very low. You know what I mean? Not nothing serious. Mm. Just I've done it on purpose, obviously. You know, so if you do get in trouble, you're not getting it's it's little sentences: three months, six months, twelve months. You know, you're not running into the years like mm. someone else. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do foreign jail? Yeah. Which was the first one? I've done. I, 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 I've done a year in Denmark. Denmark. What's I've that heard mean? their prisons are lovely. It was all right. It was. It was. It was all right, Denmark. It was. It was. It was. And I've done like little ones in Sweden. Been it's in Sweden. Got it in Japan. Is the food Ooh. nice and all that? Yeah, food was all right. Yeah. Did you get your own cell and everything. Yeah. Yeah. What about language barrier? No. Well, they they can all speak English, can't mm. they? They they can all. So he used to just play chess with his life off every day. So and then and table tennis and stuff. So I then that was all right. That's where I wrote my script. There, I wrote a script called Dreamer, a film, a film script, and that's where I first wrote it. And I think that was in two thousand five. Right. So it's still going now, Dreamer. Which, which, I rewrote it. So it'd be good to get that off the ground, really, if I could. Which country was that in when you was in Denmark? That was the Denmark one. Yeah. Did you say you were in there for a year? Yeah. Now for a year. And what was the charge? What we done, we we used to exchange foreign cash, um, like Icelandic kroner, and we'd say it was Danish kroner. It's a big difference in the exchange. It's like a thousand Icelandic is worth a pound, a thousand Danish kroner is worth hundred. Big difference. So we, we I used we used to just. Go in and mix it and just say Danish crown, you know. Because the first time I got on that, I mean, I got on it by accident, really. I came back from Sweden once and I went in a bank in Manchester and I gave the lady 10,000 Swedish crowns and I said, you know, change it. And she gave me, she gave me 5,000 quid, right? I should have only got a thousand. So I looked at the receipt and I thought, fucking hell, looked at the receipt and she's put Swedish, Swedish francs, Swiss francs. So I thought, Wow, how she done that? How she made that mistake? So I've gone and bought, <laughs> I've gone and bought some Belgian francs, added a bit of Swiss with it, gone into another bank and said Swiss francs, and they've gave me again. So I'm like, uh, uh, you know, bang, and that was that. So that was that. Then I just went bang, bang, bang. That was my job then. How so, much would you say in total you got out of that? Wow, wow, I don't know. Um, a lot, a lot of money, big though. But it was, it was, um, so as that was going along, and then I got the book, I got the, um, I got the, the, the currency book sent over from America. And I used to study that, right, now I'll go with that, now I'll go with that, now I'll go with that. And I just started doing that, right, buying that and then using it as that. And, and then eventually I thought, right, I can put my own page in the book. So I got a load of books from America sent, ripped a page out and put my own page in and delivered them to the banks myself, like as a postman, just like delivering them oh and then God. go back in like three weeks later and say, can I change this? And then they'd open my book at my what? page, look at it and then just give me the money. Oh my God. So I was like, fucking hell, man, this is... Crazy, you know what I mean? That's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, so that's what that's what happened in Denmark. So we went to Denmark with about 10 books, 
put them in the banks and then went back a month later, me and my mate, and he was waiting for us. He was, mm. So they, they went in the first bank, got the first bank, and then the second bank swooped on us. And that was it, you know, 12 months in jail. Still 12 months, not really that long. Nah, no, no, no. <laughs> it, it, it was a good exchange, a good bargain, really. Yeah. yeah. Did you see anything crazy in the jail? In Denmark, no. No, pretty mellow. It was all foreigners. It was all, there was not many Danish in there. Mm. It was all like Albanians and stuff. We was all right. We was, we was fine. And it was, you know, we, we, we got away. We got away. We got away with it there. We yeah. should have got more, really. But we did get punished, so. But it, luckily, it, it, it didn't last long. It, we got we, we got arrested pretty quick, really. Mm. But if we wouldn't have got arrested, I don't know where that would have went. You know, even the, even the even the old Bill said, you know what I mean. You, you was lucky to get you there because you nearly got away with that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So. so was it similar thing in Sweden? Yes, it's, yeah. No, Sweden was earlier on. Sweden was just like yeah, so. It was Sweden, Denmark. Yeah, and then Japan. And, uh, Japan. What happened in Japan? <laughs> wow. I mean, that is. Have you been? Have you been to Japan? My no. sister lived there. My, my parents have been. I've not been. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful place, mm. but if you cross them, if you go over the line. And you're in their system, their jail system. Wow. Very, very strict. Let's set the table for this one. You get to Japan. Yeah. What, what scam are you running? No, I, I went to pick tickets up for the World Cup final, the Rugby World Cup final, oh. off a sponsor. You know, I said, I said, a celebrity was coming and I'm, my mates, this guy's going to come and pick the tickets up. And he said, okay. So I went to pick the tickets up and... The guy, a guy came down with a woman and she just said, I'll, I'll, I'll go and get your tickets, hang on a minute. And then the guy kept talking to me and I was thinking to myself, oh, they're setting me up here. But I couldn't go, I couldn't like go. Next minute, boom, a load of police come. Proper OTT, about eight of them, you know what I mean? <laughs> Proper OTT. <laughs> boom, you nicked, took me to a police station. Um, so I'm sat there in, in, in a room like this and if you want to go for a the SIG, they'll take you to a park, like half a mile away. About 10 of them walk all around you, walk you to a park for a, just for a SIG. And then bring you back. And so what's happened? I said, listen, you know, I was just getting a free ticket out of this from his son, you know what I mean? He was going to go to the game. You know, I don't know what you're talking about. And in the end, they decided what, what to do. And he said, right, that's a crime what you've done. Next minute, they come in, handcuff me to the chair. Everything changed instantly, like that bang. Wow, so fucking, I've been sat here for three days. Why, why, why are you tying me up for? Anyway, so then they took me to the jail. Really strict, man. You can't speak, you can't look at other people. It's proper, like, wow. And they tie you, when, when you go into the toilet, they tie you up proper just to go from here to there. You know, they, they treat you. It's like wow, but they put me in with, in, with this Yakuza guy because he could speak a bit of English. No other person could speak English there, so they put me in with him. But he was great. Me and him was me and him got on great. You know what I mean? And he was he was looking at twenty five years. He he done like a four hundred million fraud, like a, um. a, a finger scam, you no know, on the phones, phone scam. And so me and him got on great. <laughs> but in the end, all the screws loved us because they was all learning English off us. You always yeah. come to the room, you know, like, <laughs> Thomas, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, so I was there for three weeks. And then after three weeks, you'd either go to the to the big judge or they let you go. And it, they just said, go, don't come back, go. So I said, so right. Did you go back to the UK? Yeah, straight back here, yeah. yeah. We had a guest on who was in the prison in Japan. And to this day, he still whispers every now and then. Oh, okay. So we had to keep telling him. Stop whispering because they're not going to be able to hear you on the podcast. Yeah. You can't talk. It's complete silence. That's it. And when you go, when, it's, a, it's a mad thing when you go into court as well. When you go to see the judge, crazy. You, you know, they bring you out of the cell. They, they tie you up on a, everyone's tied up in a rope. You, so you, you, you're in cuffs and you've got one round your waist, you've got one round your feet and you've got one going through all of you. So when you get on the bus, they put a rope through every person on the bus. So you sat there and if you look at someone... They'll go out to you, oh, 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 no looking. You can't even look at them. No, it's just total silence. No one says a word. You get to the courthouse and then they put you in like a cell, like 12 of you, 
and you can't say a thing all day from nine in the morning till six at night not one word he spoke not one word like when so you look at someone and you're like you know you okay you know and then like that like no 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 you know what i mean fucking hell it's Crazy. so natural just to look at someone isn't it when you're speaking that's to them? it mm. proper and then if you if they're taking to see the judge and then someone's walking past you've got to like just turn your hand face the wall don't look at them wow <laughs> Proper straight, man. Did they give you a job or anything? Nah, nah. You're just good. locked, just locked, just locked up mm. for the whole thing. So when you weren't teaching English, how did you pass your time? Well, I wasn't teaching English. I was just talking. I, I, the guy that I was in with, I was just talking to him, and the, the screws had come round, and, you know, and talk through the through the window. So I didn't, and, and, then, and then shower once a week and stuff, and you see your lawyer and. They don't tell you anything. The lawyers don't tell you anything. Like, I'm not done anything here. Why, why, why am I still here? Why, why am I not out? No, just bear with us. You just, you'd be okay. But yeah, you know, do you mean bear with us? <laughs> <laughs> one, yeah. one woman who contacted me, she said her brother was in a J Japanese prison and they used a, a glass rod to search his anal cavity. Oh. Did you have to do strip searches or anything? Nah. No. Oh. No. Nah. Because we didn't, we didn't, I didn't have contact with anybody. Yeah. Even yeah. when you go and see your lawyer, it's behind glass. Yeah. There's no contact at all with anybody. So when they take him to see the police for an interview, he says to him, like, why are you tying me up? It's only there. Well, no, 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 no. You know, we treat everyone the same. It's crazy, man. It's... And, and the Yakuza guy, did he tell you about the Yakuza? Did he explain yeah, it? Yeah, he, he said, he said I'm, 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 a, I'm a Yakuza. He got nicked in Thailand for... Um, so it was a four hundred million dollar um, scam on the phones, but he said he's expecting twenty five year. But he said when I when I go on the interview, I just sit there and go like that to him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, like, I don't even speak. I just, I just go like that. Do you know about the Yakuza, Jen? Nope. It's like the mafia, isn't it, in Japan? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. It was a good. I sent him a load of books when I got out and stuff. A load of like English translation books <laughs> and that. I wrote to him and stuff. Did you get twenty five years? Do you know? No, I don't know what happened. No, I don't know. No. You, you, I'll never know. Did he have mafia tattoos? Yeah, he had all that. What did they look like? Yeah, crazy man. He, 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 but he, he had total respect in there. He, he was the he was the gaffer in there. Yeah, you know what I mean. He, yeah, I'm glad he put me in with him because if he, he would have been on my own, and my number was um, was it called like Ichiban, which is number one, and when in the evening before you, the lights go down, you've got to sit on the floor and the, the, the screw will come round and you've got to say your, your number, Ichiban. And then, like, good night to him and all that. Lot, you know what I mean? Good night. <laughs> Crazy, man. It's... How was the food? Horrible. Just all rice. It, 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 and, and we was paying for it as well. You, you can pay extra for, for a bit better food. And that was still rotten as well. Didn't get any decent sushi. Right? No, no meat or fish. Nah, nothing like that. It was, it was just, you know, it wasn't nice. Oh, so yes. that was Japan. So you came back to the UK? Yeah, came back and. You know, my kids was waiting for me at the airport and stuff, all good. Oh. Yeah. I mean, how old are you at this point? Japan was only two years ago. What? It was only a couple of years ago, Japan. Two years ago? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> only, only, yeah, it was only <laughs> the last World Cup, the last Rugby World Cup. My ex was there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. At the World Cup? Yeah, because there was a, one of those, uh, not a hurricane. Uh, yeah, he goes to everywhere. He loves Does he go to food, yeah? Fuji. Mount Fuji, the, the, the I, rock he goes, festival. He follows it all around. The rugby he does. Oh, the rugby. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. Follows the rugby. So. Yeah, well, that's yeah, what we was, was there. He was for. over in Japan when I, uh, yeah, a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. was. I was in jail. Yeah. <laughs> I think we skipped your twenties, Tommy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we skipped the whole, like, the whole of my notes. Because <laughs> you're thinking that was like years ago. Yeah. 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 Because <laughs> you were talking about obviously, so Sweden, Denmark, and Japan were all quite frequent. No, that day was years ago. Japan, Denmark and Sweden was years ago. That was in your 20s, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. That was years ago, so yeah. So then, obviously, you came back after Denmark. You didn't go straight to Japan. No, no. <laughs> no. no. I've, been to, I've been to Japan before. I went and watched United there years ago. Yeah. And I, um, yeah, I've been about three times, Japan. Nice place, but don't cross them, now. You get on the wrong side of them. They're not nice. Advice taken. <laughs> wow. <Well, laughs> So what was life like in your early 20s? Um, yeah, good, man. 
Was that the beginning of the rave scene in the UK, was yeah. it? Yeah, great, great, great scene, great scene, man. Hacienda. How, yeah, how, did, how did you first find out about the rave scene and, and that? Um, the music was brilliant, wasn't it? The music, when it, when it first came across from America, I was just like, wow, what's this? And then the pills go with that, you know what I mean? So we were, we lived in Newquay for a couple of weeks, that Newquay. Yeah. Cornwall? Yeah, Newquay. Yeah. Cornwall. Okay. Yeah. Didn't you take your in, first pill in, the late pill in uh, sorry, Torquay? Torquay, that was my first pill, that. <laughs> what was it, like we, White we, Dove or something? I fucking don't know what it was, man. We were playing pool and we met this kid, give us one each, playing pool, and then everything started going and looked at each other and like, put it down, walked outside and it, the, the light, like, wow, what the fuck's this, man? And the music just made wow, sense, didn't it? As soon as the bang. pill hit. Upped. Yeah, Straight same, away, yeah, same here, yeah. And then that... just, wow, what's this? And then went, you know, back to Newquay. We, we ended up staying two years in Newquay. Newquay's we, a great laugh. We, oh, what a place. Did, was Tool Trees about? Yeah. Then, because that shut down, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Did, was yeah. you down there? Like years and years and years ago, yeah, when I was 16, I yeah. started going down there. Tall what a Trees place. was still about then, but I think yeah. it closed in my late teens. What a place that is. Oh, it was good. Great fun. memories. Yeah. Before the rave scene, what music were you into? Um, Ferry, Brian Ferry and that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Just, we, we was mods, those lot, I think. Mods. I think we was, you know what I mean? I think yeah. we was. A pair of DMs. Yeah. You, you know. never got into the punk rock? Yeah, we, 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 there was a big punk rock club the electric circus near us right next to have you heard of it electric circus no. it was it was a famous punk venue mm. and that's where i seen i seen joe strummer there with the clash mm. and the pistols and that and later on i got to know joe and i, I said to him i was at the, the circus there in 76 watching you and he's like wow because didn't he change the lyric for, at the glastonbury I festival did. for you he did, man, yeah. <laughs> he did. I was, with his, I was with his missus as well, Tommy, stood there. Tommy Gunn to Tommy yeah. Gunn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, she, I, was, I was stood with Lucy and she said, like, did you hear that? I says, yeah. Wow, you know. So, what a guy Joe was. What a, one of the best guys I've ever met. Brilliant so, bloke. So when was the first gig you that stuck into? First gig? Yeah. Wow. Um, I remember being at Rod Stewart there at Bellevue when he brought Britt Eklund. I was really young then, and the, the, one of the older guys that was with there said, go and get that signed, you know, a pound note <laughs> off Britt Eklund. So she signed that. Um, Blondie, that free trade all. That was oh, Blondie ago, was my that. first crush. Oh, was wow. she? Yes. I had oh. a Blondie poster on oh, the bedroom wow. wall. Did you used to sing her music? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Is that on there? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's under the table. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Catwoman. Yeah, what Catwoman. A what a woman. Catwoman. Ooh. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. There's some people who've got that weird fascination with, what's her name, Jessica Rabbit, and I'm like, she's a fucking cartoon. That's more recent, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I found that one a bit weird anyway. Were you much of a dancer before the rave scene, or did the ecstasy put, make you a, a, a dancer? You could not dance. Yeah, how can you not? Because like, everyone like, actually, the whole room system. was just going off, wasn't oh. it? <laughs> That's why the Ascender was brilliant, because everyone yeah. was like bounded. And the Thunderdome. Thunderdome, man. I thought that was the best club yeah. ever in the history of clubs. Well, that's where I'm from, right? That area there. Across that. the road from there. Yeah. That's Miles Platt in that. Just getting the ecstasy from the um, yeah. sulfur skinheads and this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the doormen got shot, didn't it? So they, they closed Indeed. it in the end. Yeah. Yeah. It did close, didn't it? It didn't last long, and then and we started going to conspiracy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. God, I wish I was an Irish. There was another one. No. Well, not no, but Soundgarden. Soundgarden. Do you yeah. remember that one? Yeah, I do. I do. A very spring. Did you ever go to the kitchen as well in Yume? The kitchen in Yume. Kitchen, like after the clubs. I can't remember because I was always so off it yeah. by then. Yeah. What was the kitchen? Just like someone's house. Oh. <laughs> it was called the called the kitchen, but it, was, it used to get hammered every night after like all the clubs and everything. Great days, man. So we just get in the convoys and listen to the 808 State That's show and just go, follow the convoys? Blackburn as well? Were. Blackburn. Blackburn? Was in Blackburn. What was, it? what was the club? Was it Shamu? Yeah, there's a few, weren't they, in Blackburn? Yeah, yeah. We're just getting these convoys and the, the motorway, it was like two in the morning. As far as you could see ahead of you, as far as you could see behind you, it was all ravers. Yeah. The, the police couldn't handle it, could they? Nah, they couldn't handle it. There's another one called Joy in Rochdale. Did you go to that one? It was a one-off, like Joy. in a field. I that, can't remember. That I had my, that the, was... the cops took my um, flyer collection when I got swatted. 
Yeah. And all my original Manchester flyers, they used it as evidence against me. Yeah. Really? Yeah, Even though it yeah. was in Manchester, not... Just as part of the rave proof and all this shit, yeah. Yeah. God. Yeah. Great days, the rave Wasn't scene. it? Oh, man. I just remember, like, the main headliners on a lot of them were um, Sasha and Carl Cox. Yeah. He's still going, isn't he? Yeah, Sasha's great. And then we go, we go um, to, what was it called? In Not Stoke, in Coventry. Yeah. There was one in Coventry. Hope you're enjoying the podcast. Here's a word from our sponsor, Harry's. Having such a scratchy face, I'm always delighted to get a new Harry's set. There's a foaming gel, hydrating night lotion, and the razor with the weighted handle really gets the job done. The trimmer blade makes it so easy to get into those tricky places to reach. The shave gel offers effective lubrication and just comes off like butter. It's such a smooth shave. It shaves fast, efficiently, no discomfort, and it is so smooth by the end. The hydrating night lotion is light and non-greasy. Harry's is doing a zero pounds trial. Start shaving with the products, just pay for delivery. Save every time. Save on all your shaving products without sacrificing quality. You're in control. You can modify or cancel your plan from the account page. Make sure to support our podcast and start your own skincare journey by redeeming a free Harry's trial set. All you cover is £3.95 for delivery. Just head to harrys.com forward slash Sean, S-H-A-U-N, and have your trial set delivered to your door. That's harrys.com forward slash Sean, S-H-A-U-N. Thank you for supporting our sponsor. Eclipse. Eclipse. Yeah. yeah. Stu Allen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Was playing uh, the Eclipse. Yeah. Brilliant. Shout out to Jay Weird and Thunderdome, yeah. some of the best nights of my life. Yeah, brilliant. It was. It was great. Yeah. What a time to be around. Mm. So was Ecstasy your preferred disco biscuit? At, at that moment, yeah, disco definitely. Yeah. biscuit. <laughs> no doubt about that. Wow. Yeah, it was... It was if you had a good day, you wasn't fucking great. Because there was a bit of acid knocking about as well, wasn't it? Like well, California sunshine yeah, and it. micro dots. Sunshine, you had a bad one, but, <laughs> you know, beautiful, wasn't it? Yes. Can you remember tripping? Yeah. I remember, I remember all them days. What, what crazy things happened when you were tripping? Um, wow. Just seeing things, you know what I mean? Just, but when you didn't, when you didn't, in clubs like that, it's just all everyone's just loved up, aren't they? Yeah, totally. People having sex there and all that lot. It's just like no, no one gives a shit. You know what I mean? Just get on with it. You, you know? got lads from Manchester going to Liverpool. And yeah, Boston. that's it. All no. looking at each other. Yeah, previously they were fighting each yeah, other, weren't it. they? Until so, yeah. it, and then later on it did change. Then later they got on, moody, didn't, didn't they? It got moody after the bit. Did yeah. you find the cocaine scene made people fight more? Yeah, definitely. As opposed it's to no one, no one near as as good as the E is it. No yeah. one. It's like an place. innocent era of the ecstasy coming in, and then the heavy mob took over, and the door wars, and that's the end. That's uh, it. That's it. Stabbings. Yeah, stabbings, shootings. Who yeah. controls the door? Controls the drugs. Yeah. Then oh, you the it gangs. ruined it. Yeah. Because the Manchester's got a division of gangs, wasn't it? Gooch it. and Moss Side. Yeah. And Salford and just got messy in the end, and then it just ended. Yeah. So you were living in Newquay at this point. No I, was, I was, no, I was. No, I was in Manchester, but then I, I, I was in Newquay for two years, and then I came back. So, what uh, rave years were you in the northwest? Um, well, before before Newquay and after Newquay. Yeah, both. It's the late eighties, was it? Yeah, summer of love. Yeah, yeah, summer of love. Yeah. <laughs> did you find Did you find Newquay calms you down being the, the laid back Cornwall lifestyle? Fucking great days, man. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I, I'm no, honestly. It, 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 I've got nothing but absolute great memories from that place. Were you a surfer? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was not surfing. Just earning plenty of dough and was, playing. Was that through all the... Because they've got loads of arca arcades and machines down there. Was it through that? No. How were you no, we was, we was drive We was driving out all over the place, all over down there, and coming back. And we lived there, so that was the base. And then we'd just go out in the morning to Plymouth or, you know, driving them all over and come back. And then we was out every night. And what was that day? Same thing, you know, just going Thanks. back. Yeah, you know, yeah, all that. Just messing about, just making money. Mm. Brilliant. Nothing but, you know, 
So all, you know, we all, in the end, well, a couple of us went down there to begin with, and then in the end, there's about 25 of us <laughs> who live there from, from down our end. Yeah. <laughs> we, got, we got, you know, got to know all the doormen and stuff. We played the doormen as well. We, we, it was the year heads versus the bouncers at football. We beat them 20 nil. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was us there, the year heads versus the bouncers. <laughs> Big crowd watching and everything was great. So did you know Bears and Happy Mondays and them back then? Yeah. Just got to know Bears then at that time. And then, because we were on the same scene. His dancing was iconic, wasn't oh, yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good lad, Bears. He's, he's doing well now, isn't he? He's, he's, he's on the telly a lot now, isn't he? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's a good kid, Bez. He's I'll see him at Glasgow next week. Love to get you on, Bez, if you're up for it. Come to Liverpool. <laughs> no, they're getting a feel there. They're getting a feel there at Glasgow. <laughs> yeah. Come across. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, Glasgow money gig. This, uh, <laughs> this won't be out uh, by the time Glastonbury is on. No. So. How, are we, how are you going to get into Glastonbury? Because this won't be out yet. <laughs> <laughs> when will this be out we'll film oh, ourselves God. sneaking in Glastonbury yeah. yeah if we do it we'll add it to the end of this <laughs> no we'll just, we'll just take we'll just take bands off pass them oh about. yeah yeah I've done that old trick yeah I've got snuck in the back of a truck as well before yeah, guys it. who would but you do well toilets. if you've done this there yeah mm. because if, if if you're there you can just you can go and ask him yourself you know yeah yeah it's just the music in the background copyright and all oh, that right. stuff no, but there's quieter can, can feels. You, can't you, can you mute that out? There's quieter feels. Is there? Yeah. You don't hear it everywhere you go. It's not. It's got to be a way to get it out, hasn't there? There is. It's got to be. Yeah. It's yeah. got to be. Yeah. We'll think of something. Of course. Yeah, you, you, you do well there. Yeah. Mm. There's a lot of people there, you know, to talk to. Good, good networking as well. Because it's my, my mate runs a field there where Bez and all are, so I know where they camp. Yes. I, I camp with them. Right. Who's your mate? A guy called Gazmail. I was going to say, might from, not... from, from the, um, his dad, Gazmail. Um, what's he called, his dad? Um... I was just wondering if it was the guy who gets me in. Mm. <laughs> He's got a stage there as well. Has he? Yeah, yeah. Well, do, you, do, you go, do you go every year, yeah? Yeah, I do, but work commitments, I didn't think I was going to go. So, but maybe now we can. Yeah. <laughs> well, can't you get us in? <laughs> hey mate, see what do. But... John Mail, his dad's called. And okay. The, and the John Mail and the Blues Breakers in the sixties. So he he, he runs he runs he called the um, Rocket Lounge, a bar there called the Rocket Lounge. Yeah. In Shangri La. Oh, Shangri La's great. Yeah. So I know all that firm, all that lot from that Shangri La. Have you ever been a, a little bit under the influence in Shangri La? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it's honestly, it's no. crazy. It? It's yeah. crazy after when all the main stages close. Oh my About God, late at go night. Yeah. It's crazy. Are you, it's, it's almost well, like a little it, village, isn't it? And you walk through and like, you yeah. open one door, it's like an Irish Unfair bar. Ground. Yeah, it's open called Unfair Ground. And there's like a it? sex party going on. Yeah, and, got yeah, me sold now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have you not been? Last time at Glastonbury was Goro Josh and Adamski. Yeah. I remember took acid and I couldn't find my car. I was like just walking around these little roads. Why without looking for... I was on acid yeah. looking for my car. Why were you only home? there for the day? <laughs> What's what? Were you only there for the day? No, I was there for a couple of days. But the last <laughs> night you took too much or something. It's all a blur, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so. <laughs> so we're in your 20s now. <laughs> what What are the most it, notable though. moments from your 20s? Well, I started having kids, didn't I? And me, me, you know, I had, I had my oldest lad. Well, that was he was born in eighty two, and then I had my daughter. She's thirty now, so I started having kids. You know, I started settling down. We're not, yeah, settling down, but still going away and stuff. But was that a hard thing to balance being a family man and being in the e heads? No, the 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 East didn't finish by then. Mm -hmm. Well, just about no. Wait, what, 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 when did he finish that? The the, the pill scene. Eighty five. I, I left in ninety one. Ninety one, right? Yeah. So it went right through the eighties, didn't it? It was late eighties, one early nineties. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, well, we was you know go to parties and stuff. So and his mother, you know. So we both we both was in the same scene. So yeah. But it was great, wasn't it? <laughs> 
So, yeah, all good, man. It was, we had a pretty good life, really. Yeah. So, so when did it start, the pranks start to become like major internationally news reported pranks? What, how old were you then? Um, well, the first, well, the, the, the Munich prank, that was in 2001. Right. So that was... You were early <clears throat> in your 30s by then. Yeah. Yeah, 30 odd. Yeah. So... Can you tell the viewers who are not familiar then what the Munich prank was? Yeah. We went to we went to Munich and we recreate... We, we got... I got my mate on the end of the team lineup, the Man United team lineup, and it just exploded, man. It just went crazy. How do you get someone on the, on the lineup? Was that the... First one in the papers, wasn't it? That was the, that was, I'd done, I, I, I was filming a couple of years before that on my own. And that's how it, that's how it came to me. Like, wow, I can, I can do anything here. I'm on the pitch here, you know. And then, I, I don't know, the, the team picture. Came back to, came back to Manchester and said to Carl, you know, do you fancy? And he said, yeah. And so he said, right, okay. We'll do the final. And the final that year was in Italy. It was in the, it was in Milan. So we said, right, we're going to the final, yeah. So, but United played. United got um, by Munich, and they beat us three one at home. So that means we're going out. So I said, right, we'll do it over there in Munich then instead. I said right, and I'd been there the year before on, on the pitch filming, so I knew the way on and everything. So we had the bibs, the press bibs, and all that <laughs> lot, and then just a, a magazine came with us as well. They they said, can we come with you and film it and you know and um, and document and document it all. I said yeah. So they come with us um, and they got the, they brought the kits. So there was three kit. United had three kits, a normal kit and a wait and two away kits. We didn't know which kit they were gonna wear, so we brought the three kits. And then we, the, the day before the game, I went to the United team hotel and met United Peter Kenyon the the director of football at United, um, chief exec or whatever he was, and said to him, oh, I brought me kids, you know, what kit are the players wearing tomorrow? I want them to wear the same kit. And he went, it's the white one. So cheers, man, <laughs> thanks. Went back to the old cell, right, the white one. Put it, So he put it on and that, we rehearsed it, put it on, went to the stadium. I knew the route on, down a lift onto the pitch. I'm just sat in the pitch, a couple of hours waiting for the players. And then, got in position and then I, he was just waiting for my word to say go when I just said go and he just took his tracksuit off and walked on <laughs> and stood at the end of the line up so I'm looking about and like no I'm thinking no one's seen that and then he's come back and I said no one's seen that surely that how can that no one see that so we just walked back round the, round the, round the stadium into United End watched the game showing it to a few of the lads like, and they're like wow Went back to the old cell and he was like, no one's seen that. How can no one see that? <laughs> wow, how wrong could we be, man? I mean, the next morning, <laughs> our mate knocked on the door and said, fuck, you know, you better get downstairs, man. There's fucking millions of them journalists all looking for you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. So I've come downstairs, the lift opened and they all started cheering and that. Wow. And then they all started, oh, they, they all wanted the exclusive and stuff. So we're battering them off each other. No, they off the board, you know, and all that lot. And then they just said, right, okay. And they, eventually the son had the deal. So eventually they said, right, you're not going back, you're staying here. We'll take you to another hotel. Got us a suite each. Nice. Not, not, not between us, a suite each. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Private plane back and all that lot. Mm. It was like crazy shit, man. And then we landed back in Manchester. On the plane, coming back, Stewie has come over to Carl and said, um, the pilot wants you. <laughs> the pilot wanted a photograph, wanted, a, wanted an autograph of Carl. <laughs> 38,000 feet in the air. So he's gone up there and then we landed and the, the security, the, the customs said um, to Carl, like, wow, it's mental out there, mate. He's just walked out into that and it was like, wow. And it was crazy. Have you seen the photo? I'm not. His mate just, yeah, walks over, stands right at the end, pleased as punch, looks quite serious. Exactly the same kit on. Yeah, exactly the same kit. He doesn't look like a footballer. <laughs> 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 it's just like this. 
Yeah, and just <laughs> there's just all the fucking team there. It's brilliant. Oh, it's brilliant. It, yeah. It, it was it was it was you brilliantly executed. It yeah. Was, but when you think when you when you're watching it, when you're doing it proper live, there you're thinking no one's saying that, you know, and then I'm looking, I'm looking at, I'm with all the journalists, so I'm looking at them all, like, and no one's like chasing us. I'm like, didn't you fucking say that? It's because it was so believable. Well, it was, it was, it was incredible because it was, it was, it happened so quick. He had to, he only had to walk about, what, 15 yards and he was there. <laughs> all the players seen it because all the players are like, and then he's, he's shut at you and they all went, you know what I mean? They all, all the players shit themselves, you know what I mean? <laughs> and he just stood there and then it was like, but that that got splashed all over the world. That yeah. all over the world. That went Beijing, everywhere. That America, the lot. So psychologically, then achieving that, do you think? Right, I'm onto something here. Oh yeah, clearly. Thought, wow, <laughs> wow, this is like this is crazy, you know. So then we said, right, we're gonna do another five. <laughs> so we done, we we ended up doing we, that. That's what that's where the film came into it, because Channel Four came to us then and said, "Are you doing any more?" And we said, "Yeah." And they said, do you mind if we come with you? Just a, a fly on the wall, we won't speak to you, we won't do anything. We said, yeah. And then they come with us and we, we filmed Britain's favourite Oaksaw. Yes. And that was the film, what you've seen. What a film. What a film. So we'll talk about Stunt 2, the England cricket team. Yeah. <laughs> the cricket, the cricket, yeah. Mm. At Edinburgh. Mm. In the whites. That was at Edinburgh. Well, Edinburgh was... It was a comedy of errors, you know. It, it, that's why the program was funny because mm. it was just us in real life. It was, it, you know, just stupid little things. And it was, you know, the plan was, you know, cans in the toilet, and then I'll phone him when the player gets when the player gets out. Oh yeah, and that then, one fucked and up. Then, yeah, it was my it was my niece calling me, calling me to see what time I'm back. He thought it was the call to go. He's come Shit. out, and I'm he's walked right past me, and. The guy's already at the crease, so he's walked on the pitch, and the guy at the crease is like, "What the fuck's going on here?" And then he realised, and the phone goes again, and he goes in his pocket, phone goes again, and when he comes back, he got around, he got a big cheer of the crowd, and then, and then even a copper clapped him off. But I think that I heard that that copper got sacked for that. Oh, no, he, I, I, that's what I heard. I hope, I hope he didn't, but I mean, oh. it's, it's sad, man. So that was that. So because the plan was originally for him to actually bat. He was what he wanted to bat for England. Yeah, that was the plan. He, he wanted Shane Warne to deal bowl to him, you know. Yeah, but it was just time. He was. He was just the phone call. It called. was funny. It was funny. <laughs> yeah. you know. He, still made the papers. Yeah, it was funny. Yeah, yeah. He still got the, the headline. <coughs> exactly. He's back. Yeah. <laughs> and then we went to what was the third one? England rugby. Italy, the, yeah, the, the Italian lovely, job. The Italian job. And we got, and we got a mini and everything. They, mm -hmm. they, they dropped a mini off for us in Miles Platin, right near the Funnel Dome. <laughs> Proper Italian And that was job. when minis just first came out with the Union Jack on the reef and all that lot. So how was that one executed? Oh. Well. Well, that's another one. We went the day before and onto the pitch. So I, I asked some guy, you know, where will England be lining up here? And he said, there, over that side. We said, right, okay, we know now. When we went back in the day of the game, we're still on this side. The players have come out and they've gone on that side. Mm. They've gone the wrong side of us. So again, it was like, you know, he's run on and, he, he, you know, he'd done the acker on the pitch. But it wasn't, if they'd have come over on our side, it, 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 we would have got it perfectly. So what what the plan was for him to do the hacker in front of the England team? Yeah, yeah. While they're coming out? No, no. Or what, As like, they line up, he was, he was going to just go to the halfway line and yeah. stand in front of them and do the hacker in front of them <laughs> against the other team. Yeah. Have you seen what a hacker is? Do you mm -hmm. know what a hacker is? No. He doesn't it's, a new, it's, a, it's a new, it's a Maori dance. Yeah, New, new Zealand team does it right. all black. Yeah. And they do it before every game. <laughs> yeah, it's like a. It's can a ritual. You do it? I can't do it. It's just, uh, just all Ooh. mad things to do. Have yeah, you not seen it? Like the rain dancing out. Native like, Americans. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, 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 all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. All that, yeah. yeah. It's a scary opposition. Yes. Yeah. I've That's seen it. it. I've seen so it. Get done. Yeah. Yeah. Another word for it. Yeah. Yeah. So he's meant to do it in front of the other team, um, but yeah. So it's on the other side of the pitch. That wrong. So we we got it. We got it wrong. Um, but you know, again, it, we still got in there. and We still got on the pitch. It wasn't executed brilliantly because we, 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 it wasn't, 
they'd gone on the wrong side. We we were on the wrong. We, we weren't in position properly. And then so we came back from that, and then we went to we went to Silverstone. <laughs> I mean, Silverstone was great because Silverstone. Don't forget as well. You've got to remember as well. This was this was this was right after. No, isn't the one before this Silverstone? Where you recruit your son for stunt number oh, four. Wim- Wimbledon. Wimbledon Centre Wimbledon. Court. Oh, what, what, a, what a prank. <laughs> what that, I mean, did you like what? Did you like that? Yeah. Class. So, <laughs> Wimbledon. It's quite hard to get onto Centre Court. The security's quite high. I can imagine. Don't mm. forget, this was right after 9 11. Mm. So, security, you know, this is the art of security, you know, this is like. So, when we went to Wimbledon. <clears throat> You know, the, the plan was to get them two on the on centre court just before the final. You know what I mean? And so we, you know, plan A didn't plan plan A didn't work. You know, we, so we, you know, we, I've gone into some. The, the plan was to come out of a tunnel where just be, before the players come out and walk out this tunnel. And I went and I done the recce on the tunnel, and I thought, right, yeah, this is this is fine. This, but when we went up the tunnel, we got stopped. So it was like, all right, plan B, bomb out. And then we went into a crowd and got through out of there. And then the third one, right, this is it now, it now or never, went in. And them two walked through, past the guard, and the guard pulled me and said, where are you going? I said, just go to see my wife there. He went, you can't go in there. I said, listen, man, I'll be back in two minutes. And all I've got to see is I'll see you after. That's all. He went, right, go. Walked down, about three seats from the front. Them two are sat down, I'm sat next to him. And I said, right, okay, I'll just sh- turn him round and you go. So I just walked behind the security guard, just tapped him on the shoulder, excuse me, mate. And I could just see them two behind him, get up, jump over the fence on the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> and they started playing. Started playing. But live on live on TV, that was Sue Barker said, we go to centre court, something's happening at centre court. Live on telly, them two playing. <laughs> The papers say it was the worst game of tennis they've ever seen. Oh, the worst players ever to grace the field. Like that. <laughs> Funny, man. And then they, they give the bow to the Royal Box when he was going off. Oh, fantastic. Oh, what a prank. And it was just before, was it Tim Henman was due to come Tim on? Henman, yeah, just before, yeah. Just before his match. Oh. Packed centre court. <laughs> What was the audience reception to that? Oh, they, they loved it, man. They, yeah. they loved it. And the security, you didn't get arrested for it or anything? You didn't get pulled. No. Just no. watched straight out. Yes. No questions asked. <laughs> straight out of the place. Mm. So that was another that was another classic. And what were the sort of Channel 4 doing at this point? They were just sat there with hidden cameras? Yeah, they was like scattered about, but, you know, they put microphones on us and stuff. But they, they didn't speak to us. They didn't, you know... I directed it. I directed that, and you know they didn't say anything. You know, even if we forgot something, they won't. You know, I said to him like, when we go abroad, you know, if one of us would have forgot our passport, he went, "I want a soldier." We'd have had to go back. To like undercover. He said, "We won't tell you anything. We didn't speak to us. Yeah. Just, we're just there. Didn't speak." Did they give you better equipment? Then? Yeah, do you, we like yeah. the, the secret yeah. cameras. And yeah, stuff. that's, that's it. The we had better equipment. Yeah, they looked yeah. after us, but. He, he, we didn't get money from it, but um, it was looking back at now. I think you should have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I had an agreement with the with the boss of the company. You know that if he made money, that would you know we'd split the money. But it, they said never made money, so we never got anything out of it. But looking back at it now, I mean, I've not watched it for years, but last time I watched it, it was all right. Mm. No, it's really good. I didn't like it at first when I first seen it. Because I thought it was a bit more, your own voice. I think it's about me. I think I thought it was too much about me, and it, I, it should have been about Carl really. And I, I, I'm just thinking now, nah, but but I think you guys no. were were a team because yeah, you it. you were the brains. Not yeah, you were the you made all the plans. You sorted out the routes. He was the one who executed. Yeah, it. that's right. So it was, and then you brought your son into it just for. Well, he wore the white socks be, at Wimbledon, didn't he? Yeah. So he wore the white socks. Was it because Carl was too recognised? Um, what do you mean? That you brought your son in because Carl was too recognisable. No, he, no. he went on with Carl. It was yeah, Carl they, and they were both playing on the field. Yeah, but... but you need two players, don't you? Why did you bring your son in? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> no, 
I knew that he'd want to. I knew that he'd. I knew that he'd love it. You know, and he did love it. What did he say, Dad? I really want to follow in the family footsteps. Yeah, I, I just said, Do you fancy going on a picture fat neck? And he went, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How old was, was he at this point? Wow, well, eighteen. <laughs> Something like that. He was young, lad. I bet his he loved mates it. loved that. Ah, oh, he loved it. So, and that was, you know, but when you when you speak to people about the Oaks, or they, they all have different things about their favourite. There was a lot of there was a lot of favourite parts in that film. There was a lot of wasn't there? There was a lot of funny moments, and it was all nothing was rehearsed. It was just natural, that. Yeah. You know. I think you just came. Like, I don't. That's how it came across. That's why people liked it. I think. I think my funniest was the river dance. Yeah, what at the, at the F one? <laughs> well, the, the F one was brilliant. Well, I tell Sean mm, that beautiful story. <laughs> yeah. Well, the F one, the Grand Prix was, that was the finale, wasn't it? But that, I mean, I still think now. How did we get on there, man? How did we get on that? It's, it's, only, it's small in this room. How we got on that podium there? So the winning podium at Silverstone. Have you seen it? Are you into F1? I've never watched it. No. Right. You need to watch the film, Sean. I'm going to watch it with my parents, yeah. Yeah. You'll love it. Up here. Yeah. So you got in for a vehicle this time with a pass. Yeah, through the pass. Yeah. How did you get hold of the pass? Just took it out of a van. And the van window was open. Just bump. Put it in ours. I remember you said <laughs> in the documentary, I got given it. Yeah, that, <laughs> I, know, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But the, the, that was, it was great because it was like, because I went down the day before, they was in the hotel and I went down the day before to have a look and I was just thinking, it was like, wow, can we get on there really? Because don't, right after 9-11, you know, and we were talking, we were talking to um, one of the guys that worked there the day before in the hotel and he was saying they spent five million quid on security for that Grand Prix and we just walked through it. <laughs> And you walked right up to the winner's we, podium. I mean, yeah. I mean, do you like when we were getting changed? When we got the toilet and got changed and all that lot. Yeah. Funny, and then we practiced the river dance on the grass. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then, so my brother-in-law came with us. So we put him in position where he's watching it on TV. We're at the car and he's watching it on telly over there. So the plan was to phone us when he's like ten laps to go, then four laps, so we can get ready. And then he come over. What? I mean, run out of credit. You know what I mean? That's that's what I'm saying about that natural, was, yeah. natural. I've got no credit on my phone. <laughs> Bang. So anyway, we walked round. There's a turnstile there, and that was the route in. Let me, come on, follow me here. Well, underneath that. So now we're at the gate. What leads up to the podium? And it was locked. So there's a guy. Guy stood there. So was, yeah. Sponsors and he, he just went like that. He looked at us because we had we had the driver's things on. Right, he just went <laughs> and opened the door for us. <laughs> Walked up the stairs and another guy at the top of the stairs. He just nodded at us. Bump went round right on the podium and then done a river dance. <laughs> All the crowd thought we was the drivers. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I mean that was I mean that was the end of Oaks. Then that was the end of the film. It was like wow, we've done it. How did it make you feel? Oh, Absolutely. Wow, we've done it, man. We, we, we you know, we, we've done it. So we just got ladders straight from the podium, straight to the bar. <laughs> Boom. And then looking back at it now, it's, t it's 20 odd years ago, that. Yeah, it's years, gone fast. It? Wow, it is, isn't it? When that premiered then, what was the reception like for you? Mental. Mental, man. It was, it was, it was, it was crazy. Because it was, it was, Three, I think three million watched it the night it was on. And United was playing Everton the same night as well on Sky. We beat that. There's more viewers watching us than watching United. Wow. <coughs> Did you ever think that would happen? No, not at all. Wow. And so it, it was It was crazy after that. Did it change your life a bit? Um, Oppor it could have done. Opportunities it, and it, stuff. It could have done, yeah. You know, opportunities did come, come our way after that. But we didn't, we didn't take advantage of it. Wasn't a part two. Well, <laughs> we've done, we've done, I've done another 20 after that. 20? Yeah, I've done, I've done loads of pranks. Yeah. Loads of pranks, yeah. you know, with different people. Mm -hmm. Press conferences and all that and like snooker and stuff, you know. Was it the yeah. BAFTAs? BAFTAs, yeah. What, 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 what was the next major one after Hoaxer? 
It might have been the. It might have been the. United, United, Liverpool. It could have been. A few years later. But I, I, ne I never stopped. I never stopped going to watch United, and I never stopped going to press conferences and asking questions and stuff. You know, to Ferguson and all that lot. So I, I never, I never, I, I never stopped pranking me. I still haven't. So, with the with the pool table one, whose idea was that? Mine, but it was Judge Trump, wasn't it? That was the guy. We, they, they, we couldn't do it on anyone else, could we? <laughs> you know, it's such, and you know that was a top day. I mean, that was a that was funny, man. Because trying to let the viewers set the table a bit. Yeah, well, yeah, we went, we went down to Sheffield. We went to um, semi final of the World Championships in Sheffield. Um, to land the fart box in the in the auditorium when so when the plan was when Judge Trump bends over to take a shot to press it, it was remote control. Oh, it was a fart. Oh, it wasn't real fart. No, 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 it's a, it's a remote thought, control thing. I thought it was either fart noises or something. Uh, I didn't no, know it was a box. No, it's, yeah, it's a box. You get fart box. So what I've done, <laughs> I've put it underneath Judge Trump's mate's seat. Oh shit. Yeah, so I put it underneath there. So, so it's remote control from waiting. a distance. All it's waiting for now is me to press the it. Player's seat. Holy shit. No, his mates. Is that next to it? No, no. Quite far, halfway back. Halfway right. back. But it, it's so quiet in there and his microphone's yeah. all over. It's, it, you can hear the pin drop. Of course. How, how far from the seat were you? About from it there. Right. Close to it. Yeah. I had to make sure it was close. Yeah. So Three metres tall. But we're laughing. So I'm with Junior, my, my son and, and his mate, and they're like, come on, come on. Like, come on. No, no, hang on. But we're laughing, we're laughing. And then it, just the right moment, it was time to fucking absolutely perfect. Wasn't it? Oh, man, bang. And then he just stood up, didn't he? He started laughing, didn't he? Yeah. The players loved it. Yeah. The commentator loved it. You know, the, the audience loved it. And then... Who was the woman who was scowling? That was the referee. That was the ref. <laughs> that was the... She, she was the only one that wasn't happy. Because it was yeah. the second... Wasn't there a second one? Yeah, the second one again. When a face just again. went... A face went really angry, didn't When he, done it? he bent down again and pressed it again. Yeah, yeah. And then now they're looking for it. They know, they know the general direction where it is. So they're like... They're like oh, man. So we've come up and party that, you know, it's them. <laughs> Fucking... They're getting for it. I'll judge some mates. <laughs> 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 Um, see you later, lads. <laughs> <laughs> never so you never got busted? No. We never got busted, no. Clean break out of that Clean one. break, just just laughing. But we couldn't laugh until everyone else laughed. Yeah. But we was like, no, you just like, you can't help yourself. Yeah. Any moment, any moment, I'm just going to burst out here. And then the audience started laughing, and then we could laugh then. Was that one live? Live, live mm. on telly. So what was the media response to that oh, one? Crazy, man. Because the... The commentator made it there. The commentator made it. You know, the commentator said, well, the last time we heard a noise like that was when I was playing Bill Werben it years ago. And everyone started laughing. And then the referee's like, that can you calm down? Because when the commentator speaks there, everyone's got earplugs in. Everyone's got ear, so they can all hear the commentator. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know that? No. Yeah. When the commentator's talking on telly, when you go to the studio, you can buy a thing, but you put in your ear and you can hear the commentator. Wow. That's why when they say something, they all laugh. <laughs> so the whole place laughed when he said that. <laughs> and then I pressed it again and then and then, and then it was all like, oh no, nuisance is now, you know what I mean? <laughs> all looking for it and they found it. <laughs> so when it's a clean break like that, do you have to announce at did some you, point yeah, that it we did you take it was responsibility well, we, after? Well, we filmed it. Uh, yeah. I filmed we filmed it, we film. filmed it like putting landing it and stuff. Yeah. We filmed it all. <laughs> yeah, so So what did you do at the BAFTAs? The BAFTA Awards. <laughs> Which one? I've been about five. Um, <laughs> when I went with Austin that time. Yeah. Have, have you seen the video with him on the, the BAFTA? No. Austin. He's gone off and collected one. No, no, he didn't collect it. He just took it off a table and give it him. Yeah. And he's like that with the BAFTA. <laughs> with BAFTAs, yeah. MTV Awards. I've got an MTV Award in the house. A real MTV Award. How? <laughs> I've got it from the MTV Awards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what, you just walked up and took it? Yeah, no, one of the, it was for, um, what, what band was it now? Some band, anyway, but they was getting interviewed. So I just thought, yeah, I'll look at me a mantelpiece, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so I've got it I at home. your house is, your mantelpiece is covered. Just funny. It? No. Just surround yourself with funny people, man. Yeah. Life is about love. Get away from the stress, you know. You just surround yourself with funny people. 
I, I recommend it, honestly. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, there's a load of them. What else? Um, I mean, the 1999 story, you know, when United won the treble that year, that's a great story because that's, I documented all that. And that's, United's have a great season. And I was the only one with a camera there, you know, because there's no phones before the internet, no phones, no phones at all. So I didn't see anyone else filming. I was on a, and I filmed, I went to the first game in Lodz in Poland and each game was on the pitch filming. As 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 a, as a press, every match from there to the final, and I asked him a question at every game. Every press conference, he asked Ferguson a question, and in the end, he endorsed me, Alex Ferguson. You know, he he, he said, you know, well done, you. You know, you've been with us all the way through. You've done really, you know, well done and stuff. So, I filmed all that, and then I seen him. I seen him at Valencia. United played Valencia. I think it was a year after that or two years after that. And I've come out of the stadium, I was on my own, I come out of the stadium and he's come out of the stadium, same time, and he got in the car. So I just went out to the guy. He opened the door for me, I got in the car. <laughs> so I'm in Ferguson's car. So he's Ferguson, me, some Spanish driver and some Spanish minder. So them two are Spanish, couldn't speak English, <laughs> but me and him. So he just said, what are you doing? I said, Alex, give the list of town, mate. And he went, where are you going? I went, anywhere, just, you know, United's hotel or whatever, I'll meet, meet the lads. And he went, right, took us to town. No one would believe me. Because I couldn't, I had the camera there, but I couldn't pull the camera out. I can't pull the camera out in a situation like that. Because he just no. said, get out, wouldn't it? Yeah, of course. I didn't, so I didn't pull the camera out. So I just said, just got to lift off fucking Ferguson there. No way, no. I said, <laughs> so I thought, I've got to prove it now. The next game, they play in um, Kiev, in Kiev, away. Right, and this time we had the camera on, and I said to him, he come out of the airport, got on the bus, and we got, I walked on the bus, said, Alex, thanks for that lift in Valencia there, mate. And he went, oh, you're okay, son. How are you doing? <laughs> I just went, cheers, fella. Bomb and showing that one. Bye. Bye. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, so I got to, we got to know, I got, I, I, sort of thought, I, I thought I'd chilled him out in press conferences because he he used to let me speak. I don't, I just ask it, I just say something stupid, you know what I mean? I just... Mm. You know, it's true that Man City approached you and stuff, and he's, what are you talking about? You know, and later on, and, you know, should he be playing for England, you know? And he'd, he'd always come back and say something. Mm. So he, and, and he'd always say, like, let him say something. So <laughs> I thought I chilled him out. Did you? Why did you not think of becoming a journalist? I don't know. I mean... It's never crossed my mind. Okay. <laughs> or press. It's never crossed my mind. Because, I mean, you got in enough t events pretending you're press. Oh, yeah. A you, lot. You could have gone to a newspaper and or anything and worked for them and gone, I'll get you access anywhere. I didn't need them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I've never, I've never thought of it. No. No, I've never. We asked, you know, talk at Ferguson, you know, we, I'd love to think, I'd love to meet Alex Ferguson again. Mm. Well, funny enough, funny enough, we United Liverpool this last season, we was in the director's box and he's, he's in the director's box, isn't he? Mm. And I thought then I was with my kids and I thought then should I go and say something, but I didn't mm -hmm. say anything. I should have really went up, went up to him and said, Alex, but I seen him at, I seen him at another game and I said to him, do you remember me, Alex? And he went, yeah, he, of course I remember you. And he, he said, you know, have you had Van Gaal yet? Have you, been, have you had Van Gaal yet? I said, no, I've not had him yet. <laughs> so we, I'd love to meet him again. Yeah. Maybe one day. We'll, we'll put a shout out to him on YouTube for yes. you. Yes, yeah, get on, in Alex. touch. Give us a shout. <laughs> <laughs> so what do your family think of all the pranks and mishaps? Um, funny. Really? Yeah. Yeah? Kids, what about the wife? Kids love it. No, there's no wife. No. no I'm no. single. No, 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 no missus. No, no, no. But um, the kid's mother didn't like it. Oh, yeah. yeah. But... The kids love it. Yeah? Yeah, the kids love it. Are they all it. a bit like that? They love it, all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, obviously, why, your old Why wouldn't is... they? Yeah, it's why good fun. It's, it's funny, it's a laugh, isn't it? You know, you mean, there's nothing wrong with making people laugh. And the good thing about, if you look at, you know, the exploits, what we've done, I bet 20 million people have viewed our footage online. Oh, at it's least, a lot of people, yeah. man. It is. Isn't it? Yeah. 
found nothing any at all them lot, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, it's, uh, people love what we do, you know, and when you look at the when you look at the the messages and the, the replies from the like the hoax are, it's all good. Mm. I've not seen one bad one. No, I think it's hilarious. Not one bad one, honestly. It's all no. good. Oh, brilliant, you know. When are you gonna do another one? And have you got any more plans? And it's all yeah, always. Always more plans. You can't disclose more plans. them though because it'll spoil the uh, yeah, set, we set set glass and <laughs> <laughs> There we go. But, glass though. So what do you think of like today's uh social media, the TikToks and you know, how people becoming you know, doing pranks on that, those platforms? Um as opposed to the old I've, school. Well, I've not views. I've not I've not seen anyone I've not seen anyone do anything that's beat ours yet. In the world, I've not seen any. I've not seen any. I've not seen better sporting pranksters than us. I ever. think a lot of them now are staged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. yours is verified. Oh yeah, it, it, it's off the cuff. It's just bang. You know what I mean? I've not seen anyone do anything pretty close what we do. Mm. That's why people people love it, man. It's I still get it now. I mean, people don't recognise me, but. You know, when the people that know me will say, you know, when's the next one coming? When's the next one coming? You're like, I'm not telling keep, you. In, keep us informed, you know what I mean? <laughs> like when I go somewhere, you're you doing anything there, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I get recognised off security now as well. Just wear disguise. Come here, you, you know what I mean? No, 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 we're doing anything here. <laughs> what do you get? Yeah. I have to wear a wig or something. Wig. Well, that's it. Yeah, yep. oil rig. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. exciting life. I love it. Yeah, just what's wrong with it, you know? Nothing wrong with making people laugh. People no. too serious, aren't they? Especially that's during right. this pandemic. That's Everybody it. got serious, that's didn't it. they? It's too serious, man. Everyone, yeah. aren't they? Mm. Just chill out, man. Come and do a prank or two, you know what I mean? Yes. That'll sort it. Yes. So if you were to write a book, would it be advice on, giving, on doing pranks? <laughs> <laughs> Getting into stadiums, yeah. gigs... Oh, well, we, we was we was gonna we was gonna do one called School of Scoundrels, <laughs> teaching teaching people how to do pranks. That'd have been funny, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. that'd have been funny. <laughs> you know, right? You you know today's today's task. You know, you've got to get to London. You've got to stay in London all day, and you've got to come back without spending anything, not one pence. Go on, see you later. And then I could show them how to do it, and then they've got to do it. You know, or you've got to. Go for a five star meal without paying, but you can't run. You've got to blag your way out of it. You know, just like, oh, I forgot my wallet, you know, <laughs> you know whatever. No. So, but the skill for scoundrels, that'd have been funny. No, no wonder Tommy didn't take any travel expense. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> no, I've, I've run away from a bill. I'd like to know how to yeah. blag my way through mm. it. I'll show you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go for dinner. <laughs> no. What the cavern? <laughs> no, so for the viewers watching this, then Tommy, how can they find you and support you and follow you and watch your stuff? Um, just email me. Just, you know, the old fashioned gear. You know, just, just not on Facebook, Twitter, all that. No, not really. I have, I have started. I have done things like that, but I don't know where it all is. You know what I mean? So all my stuff's all over that place. I would like to see it all in one place, really, but... Yeah. You don't, you don't, well, for, for an example, when we'd done the snooker, we came out of the snooker at Sheffield, and we we filmed it all, got on the train. We, we, the car park closed, so we, we, we had to get the train back. So by the time we got on the train, some guy put that out online, right? Some guy from Leeds. He must have just been watching telly, taped it, wow, and put it out. He's had five million views, so he's, he 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 got paid for that, right? That must be so annoying right? for you now. We put ours out two weeks later, and ours had five thousand views. He got all the views. It's I texted him, didn't I? Said, hey, hey, hang on, mate. That was that was us like that. He went, oh, cheers for that. What, what are you doing? Another one. <laughs> so is that the one that's still up? That's got the millions still, of views. That, that's it. That's it. Not a that's all I've watched then. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's all the ones watched. What's his name? What's he called now? Um, <laughs> Copyright claim. It's from, it's from, it's from Leeds, the guy. All right, I think I've got it right down here. You could do a claim through YouTube and they have to give you his money. Yeah, but mate said something like that. Copyright claim. 
Yeah, but yeah, yeah, but it's not my, it's not my copyright. It's not my. It, 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 it's filmed by the TV. Oh, that's right. It's not your copyright. It's not me. Is it? It's not mine. Nah, it's not mine. Is there some, there's someone you sent me in a video invading Champion League's final. If we need to cut this out, we will. Jarvo sixty nine. Yeah, Jarvo. I know Jarvo because a mate of mine. Yeah, so he's like a not being rude, a younger version of you. You'd say because you sent me over his yeah, videos. He's he's yeah he's done. He's got a big following. He dressed, yeah, he dressed as a camera crew. He's, he's he from did London. the National Television Vision Awards. Yeah, he? that's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah he, Jarvo sixty nine. So he's a mate of yours. Yeah. How did you come to me, so? He got in contact with me. Yeah. And just said, you know, I like what you do. Can we meet up and have a chat and stuff? And we did. And I've done a few things with him. Like the, they don't even seen the cricket last year, last summer. You see the cricket game, just done three crickets, one after the other. The hat trick against India. When he went on as an Indian player, he bowled, he batted, and he fielded <laughs> for India. <laughs> That got millions of views in India. So you're directing him now? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Protégé. I told him what to do, you know, I told him, I, you know, go and stuff and, you know, run there and get here and now go and, yeah, so he's, he's, but he, he done, he, he done the, the best one I've seen him do, but he, he done the final, he done the, he done the final the other day, last week, in Paris. He got on the pitch at the final. <laughs> Who were they playing? Liverpool and, Liverpool and, um, the final, the European Cup final of the day in Paris, Real Madrid. Wow. He, he was on the pitch then. Oh, that's the one you sent me the video? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Oh, my God. That was, that, that was last week. That, I was with him. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so he's, Should we put the links for his videos in the description box below? This yeah. He, he's B BMW Jarvo. He's, he's, yeah, I, I subscribed to him this morning. Yeah, BMW Jarvo. Yeah. Yeah, so he's, he's the new guy. He's good, he's good. He done, he, done, he done the Olympic diving board. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> what? The Olympic, the Olympic final. Watch that video. Oh it's God. hilarious. Yeah. It's Can, hilarious. We'll have to get in touch with him. It's yeah. hilarious. Get you two on together. Yeah, it's, it's hilarious. Oh, my God. He'll come on here, Jarvo. Yeah? Yeah, definitely. Shout he's out, out of London, is he beaming? Is it, yeah, he can, he can meet you down your end. Sweet. Mm, wicked. Yeah. 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 So he's, yeah, he, he done the Olympic diving board. It, well, he's had videos that have had, had 70 million views. Wow. wow. He's a, he, he used to work for, I don't know if you've heard of him, Troll Station. Have you heard of them? Mm -mm. It's a, company, a firm called Troll Station. He used to work with them. Mm. Wow. They've got a big following. Click up with him then. Yeah, they're big, they're big following. So he's, got, he's not with them now. We sort of like, he's with me now. So we, so we, we're, pl we're plotting stuff. So you're, but, you're, you're the brains again. I just help him, man. I just, you know, he's. I brought him more to the mainstream, really. You know, he's. He, they do pranks on on the on the public and stuff, and I says, you know, to him, no, let's get on live TV. You know, get on. That's where the big thing is. And in return, is he teaching you TikTok? <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he knows all that. He, he, he's, good with, he's good with all that. You know? yeah. He is. He is. He's good with all that, Danny. So, mm. so it's all yeah. So he's, he's flying. So we're at the European Cup and we got the World Cup. And that'll be interesting. Yeah. In Qatar. <laughs> yeah, so. Exciting stuff ahead. <laughs> Exciting stuff. Brilliant. All right. Well, thank so you. So please go down and support Tommy. We'll put his YouTube channel down there. If you want to email him, we'll put his email down there. That's his preferred choice of contact. Let us know in the comments what you thought about this. Appreciate you watching. Hope you've enjoyed it as much as us. Thank you, Thank Tommy. you. Oh, you're welcome, Brilliant. mate. Yeah, yeah, cheers. Cheers, Sean. Yeah, thank oh, you. Cheers, thank cheers you. darling. Jump up. Come on. Oh, give it to oh, Cheers, darling. Oh,